Salwete Omnis, and welcome to Mythic Mondays, where we will talk about different creatures and figures from folklore mythology all over the world. I'm Dale Wainwright, author of the dark fantasy series The Hollow Sun, which, coincidentally enough, actually features a lot of these uh, creatures and figures. Hmm. Today we're going to talk about the Strigoi, which is the term for vampire in Romania and surrounding areas. While there are some terms that are kind of interchangeable with that, those tend to refer to their own thing. So we're actually going to probably cover those in a future episode. Vampire lores exist all over the world, and each culture has its own take on these blood-sucking fiends. But the Strigoi is actually what our modern media vampires are very loosely based on. Very, very loosely. This is due in part to Bram Stoker's Dracula, which sort of kind of took a little bit of the Strogoi folklore, but mostly he just borrowed heavily from other romanticized vampire novels of the day. We'll probably get into that more in a future episode of Wainwright Writes. Anyway, so let's cover some basic concepts of the Strogoi. Unlike how we typically think of vampires, Strigoi weren't pale. They were said to have ruddy complexions. This is likely due to the discoloration of the skin during decomposition. People in Romania and the surrounding areas tended to exhume bodies at the slightest possibility that someone was a Strigoi, which is why decomposition, or the lack thereof, plays a rather prominent role in the identification of a Strigoi. For instance, one of the signs a corpse was a Strogoi was that months or even years later, the only thing to have rotted off will be the nose. But honestly, the whole exhuming of bodies thing got so bad that there was like a bishop and an archbishop and other church leaders that were just like, guys, seriously, just chill. Stop digging up corpses. But since they still do it today... Other common physical characteristics of a Strogoi include a bald head, cloven hooves, and a tail. I wonder why those didn't make it into the romance novels. Huh. It can be assumed, however, that they can sort of take a normal human form, likely due to magic. This is because there's stories of Strogoi moving on to other towns and basically starting their lives over, getting married, and having a whole brood of Strogoi children or of female Strogoi, more accurately called Strogoika. I hope I got that right, uh, basically going on to become vampiric black widows. There's also lots of stories of Strogoi returning to their spouses and lovers, and one would hope that they're not getting with the humans while looking like a decomposing corpse with animal body parts. We do know that the Strogoi can shapeshift, as they are known to take the forms of owls, wolves, dogs, cats, and the deathhead moth. You'll notice a distinct lack of bats in that list, as I have not actually come across anything related to bats in any of my folklore research on them. The owl is an important aspect, though, as it does relate to the etymology of their names. Strogoi comes from the same word as strix, which is actually what we use today for the genus of most owls, but it's also an ancient Greco-Roman night monster that was usually described as being rather owl-like. But we'll talk about the strix in a future episode. Not all strogoi are undead, however, as there are live-type strogoi, which are those who are born to rise again after death and become a dead-type strogoi. This can be due to a variety of reasons, including being the child of a Strogoi, being born under any number of different kinds of ill omens, or being born with the call still wrapped around you, especially if it gets into the infant's mouth. Live types were known to steal the power or mana from others and animals, or even somebody's bread-making ability, because being the best bread-maker in your village is, like, super important. They can also do other types of spells and incantations. All of these things are things they tend to learn from dead type Strogoi. Uh, one of the things they can do, for instance, is control the weather, although evidently it will 
just rain any time a strogoi takes a bath. For reasons. Other ways the strogoi differs from the vampires we know is that stabbing it through the heart with a stake just won't cut it. While methods of dispatching a dead type strogoi vary, most of them deal with fully removing the heart, cutting it up, and burning it. The ashes are then either disposed of in a river or mixed with water and given to people who are sick and thus most likely under a strogoi's curse. Drinking this delightful ashy water will lift the curse, turning them healthy again! Yay! Some stories insist that you also have to chop up and burn the body, and you can't miss a single piece because if you leave even a sliver of bone, that will be enough for the strogoi to fully regenerate and return. There are some methods that do talk about stakes, although one of them is really just a, a way to nail the strogoi into the coffin so it can't rise again by putting a stake through its belly. In Serbia and Bulgaria, they do talk about putting a stake through the heart, but that's usually coupled with putting a nail in the back of the neck, and really, these are just methods to make it so that the devil can't use the corpse and make it rise again as a strogoi. And then some people just like to try to trap the strogoi in the coffin with various methods of ensnarement or just by confusing it. Now, strogoi, typically the dead type, have some really weird rules. For instance, they can't rise on a Saturday. Uh, if you put seeds around their grave, they won't be able to leave it without counting them all. Similarly, if you put the seeds in their coffin, they won't be able to rise until they eat all of the seeds. If a strogoi is chasing you, you can throw rumpled fabric at it, and it has to stop, smooth the fabric out, and fold it neatly before it can proceed. Also, you can potentially elude them by sleeping with your head where your feet normally are, because evidently they lack object permanence, or just get really confused by it. Well, obviously they are not home, it is just this severed foot on a pillow. Eh. The whole stuff about them not being able to enter without being invited is bunk, but there are some interesting ways to kind of keep them out of the house. Many of them sort of play on the Strogoi's evident OCD, like, for instance, there's this one story that involves putting needles in the threshold with their points up, and the Strogoi can't cross until it removes each needle separately and takes it away somewhere and then comes back and then gets the next needle. But then again, some of the methods that Strogoi have for getting into your house are also kind of weird including magically using your furniture to open the door for them. At least the garlic thing is right. They freaking hate it. You can stuff it in their mouth while they're in the coffin to prevent them from rising. You can rub it on your livestock to protect them, or you can hang it up all around your house to keep them away. So that's cool. There's even more weird and wacky and sometimes downright creepy stuff I can get into about Strogoi, but we're going to have to end it there. If you have any Strogoi-related questions, leave them here or message me or whatever. If you want a good movie recommendation, check out Strogoi, filmed in Romania with Romanian actors, though they do speak English. It's definitely entertaining and has great lines like, She was eating garlic? Then it's not Strogoi! And if you want to read a book that features Strogoi, you can read the first book in my series, linked below. Thanks for watching, everyone, and be sure to subscribe to the channel so you will not miss another episode of Mythic Monday. Catch you later.